Welcome to Book of the Week. I'm Robin Caddy, and this week our book is Elliot Erwitt's New York. Published by Tenoyes in 2017, this is available for £9 from Amazon and presumably other online retailers, and at that price represents a remarkable book. The foreword by Adam Gopnik contains many pearls of information. He says, We respond to truthful depictions of New York with the same surprise that we feel when we hear a recording of our own voice. Elliot Erwitt sees a lot, but what he sees above all is life, and when the life is in New York, it somehow manages both to separate from the street scene around it and remind us of it at the same time. He compares Erwitt to Henri Cartier-Bresson, the work created in New York, with Cartier-Bresson's work in Paris. He says, Cartier-Bresson, the poet of an old city and the poet always of an old civilization, a European to the core and soul, shows us the inevitability of people being turned into their cities and civilizations. His boy with the two bottles of wine is a boy on his way to becoming a Frenchman. The two men, whose paths don't quite cross in the Palais Royal, are in some way the same man, or the same man heading two different ways. With Erwitt in New York, the place becomes its people. His subject is the American curse and partial blessing of precocity, not the French one of persistence. Life here goes on bottom-up, not top-down. Not the decisive moment, but self-delighted moments. Not significant moments, but serendipitous moments are his favourite subjects. He goes on, Erwitt's subject is the happy accident, that serendipitous moment, the one that just falls on you. The humour in his photographs begins as wit, odd puns of people and things, but becomes something more human as it goes along. Humour in art fails more often than not as it does in poetry, because a joke depends on some little story developing in time, and the time of a picture, like that of a poem, is short. Jokes are narrative, and we go to pictures for epiphanies. Yet, Erwitt's visual jokes genuinely delight. His humour runs naturally into a dry, melancholic poetry. Any photograph becomes an elegy as quickly as it's made, not for any profound metaphysical reason, but for the same reason that anything that shows a thing that was here and now isn't does. Erwitt's sudden sad moments seem only a shutter stop away from his puns, which is a test of their excellence. All good jokes back up onto sad thoughts.
hope you will agree. New York, Elliot, oh, it's New York. It's New York that you want to visit. I want to go there too. What an amazing photographer. What an amazing city. Uh, we'll just look at some of my favorite images, individual images from this book. Um, starting off with, I think, perhaps the funniest picture in the whole book, because where else do you need other than a car park to uh, park up your horse? Yeah, always a good place to do it. Uh, this next picture reminds me of one of the famous dog images, the image with the dog, uh, with the man with the cap on. And I just think that's an amazing photograph. And Coming from a city famous for its cruise ships, that photograph's always resonated with me. Humour? Yes, we get a lot of humour with Elliot, don't we? What an amazing, amazing photograph that is. Perfection, I hope you agree. Uh, the only picture of a dog in the whole book is this picture of a horse. You can't shoot dogs all the time, I suppose, and there's other outlets for that. Uh, one thing that Erwitt's always been amazing with is children as well. He depicts them so well in his books and in his photographs. Here we see Marilyn Monroe photographed wearing a dressing gown in a window, but a beautiful, beautiful photograph nonetheless. And the final picture is from oh, its own New York apartment overlooking Central Park with a parade going on and either his children or grandchildren enjoying the view. What an amazing book. And that's why he's pretty much my favourite all-time photographer.